Okay, so this is sculpting a mould rack part two, and uh, as you can see, I've been adding little rolls of plastine onto the base of the mould rack. I haven't put anything on the legs yet, really. I'm going to leave that until a little bit later on. Uh, I'm going to cover the whole thing with these little rolls of plastine, kind of just to kind of. Uh, lay out the basic muscle structure of the rat and I'm going to use some hot plastiline in my slow cooker not as hot as it was the last time it's more of a kind of warm cheesy cream cheese kind of texture and I'm going to spread that over the feet now I guess I've decided to do the feet after all uh, I think I'm just pasting on a little bit just to kind of give the rolls of plastic something to bite onto. Yeah, there you go. I find if you put the soft plastic on first, it just helps helps the plastilines to stay where you want it to stay and it doesn't doesn't roll or, or slip off the metal so easily. Sometimes I'll paint a bit of a fast cast or something on top, onto it just to kind of uh, again give the plastiline something to bite onto. And here we go, so putting the rolls of plastiline onto the legs and feet just to kind of bring the whole thing together now. I take my time with this. Sometimes I'll just stand and uh, look at the piece for a, a few minutes just to kind of decide where I want the next bit of plastiline to go. Sometimes you don't have that kind of uh, fortune when you're working on an actual job, you're kind of pressed for time and a boss never likes to see you not working but uh, sometimes they just don't realise that you are working, you're just working in your head, you know, it's, a, it's like the theory of sculpting. I think you're always kind of, uh, when you're working on a, on a job, a particular, particularly a a job that you enjoy, a sculpture that you enjoy, you're always thinking about it even when you're not working on it. So I'm sticking some plastiline blocks underneath the feet now because uh, now that I'm working on them I don't want them to move about too much and also um, it helps me to think about the pose that I want as I said before in my first the first part of this video I wanted to it to look like it was backed into a corner and you know ready to kind of attack you so it's back feet are slightly raised like it's in a, a sewer or in a, or in a tunnel and it's kind of backed up against the the edge of the tunnel, the wall of the tunnel and snarling at you. So I'm using the, the hotter, wetter plastiline now to kind of paint over the top of the plastiline rolls and just kind of fill all those little gaps. I want it to stay hot so sometimes I'll use a hairdryer in the other hand just to keep it wet while I'm brushing it on because it'll start to dry, it'll start to cool as soon as it hits the, the cooler plastiline and I don't really want that to happen so I'm using a hair dryer in my other hand while I'm brushing the wet plastiline on with the, my right. See, there you can see it there. Now you 
even with this part I'm taking my time and I'm thinking about how the direction I'm brushing the plastiline on I'm following the same direction as the as the rolls of plastiline so brushing it's kind of along the contours of the skin the same direction as the skin and the same direction as the muscles this all kind of helps later on to create the skin texture Incidentally, I uh, used some fake pearls from a, I bought from a charity shop. I bought a pearl necklace from a charity shop with various size beads on it to make the eyes. Sometimes it's uh, so it works a lot cheaper than going to a, a model shop and buying some Perspex spheres. It makes them a bit bright, but. Uh, I don't think that's a problem. You can always paint them with a bit of grey paint if, if it really bothers you. I'll probably, when I've finished the sculpture, I'll paint the, the eyes and the claws and the teeth grey just so it all looks like one, one piece. And this takes a bit of time. You've got to be very careful with this, don't keep going over the same bit if you're not happy with it. All that's going to do is the hot plastiline will eventually start to melt the plastiline underneath and you'll just end up losing all your uh, all your detail, all the, all, the mu all the muscle direction and just end up with a, a big melted blob of plastiline. You know, if you're not happy with something, if you're not happy with the way it's going, stop. Don't keep going because that's not going to fix it. Okay, so now I'm using one of my uh, my kind of textury sculpting tools that I made myself and I've had for years, and uh, kind of using that to kind of smooth over, but also add the skin texture onto the plastiline. Find the best tools are the ones you you make yourself. They always tend to be the ones I use the most, and they tend to be the ones that last the longest as well. I made this from a old paintbrush handle and some brass square brass rod, which I carefully twisted with a drill and a vice, and then bent into shape. You've got to be careful when you're bending it because brass is quite fragile and doesn't like to be bent. I think you can, if you heat it up, it bends a lot easier. So, I've obviously started to uh, use the hairdryer now with the tool. The clay was probably a bit too hard and wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, I wasn't blending as much as I wanted it to, so hair dryer kind of melted down enough for me to get the result I was looking for. I'm thinking I'm using a grade 50 plastiline on this, which is kind of like a medium, medium texture. Uh, find anything below, below that, like a 45 or a 40 is probably a bit, a bit too soft for me personally and a, anything like a, above that, like a 55 is, unless it's a nice hot summer day, probably a bit too hard. So I'm starting to kind of think about the mouth and the cheeks and the jowls. So an awkward angle for me because I'm quite tall, but obviously I can adjust the height of the turntables, or I can just take it off the 
stand and turn it upside down but uh, let's not go nuts just yet I think I'm just roughing that out sometimes I'll just notice something while I'm working on something else and just switch on to that for a little while just because it, because it bothers me and also because you know it's uh, sometimes you need to you kind of need to work on the whole thing at the same time to a certain level because if you're just working on one one part all the time you find when you get to that those other bits they uh, they don't match what you've already done that's how I like to work anyway just kind of building the whole thing up in one go as I go along so I'm demonstrating how I use this particular tool again following the direction of the skin and the muscles but kind of crisscrossing as well doing a kind of V shape like a fan a fan shape a fan V trying not to do a straight lines doesn't really matter so much at this point because I'm not doing very long lines you know I'm doing the same with the foot and the toes and adding a bit of detail on them to kind of make them a bit more interesting it's easy to ignore them and if you look on the real male right there's not really that much detail apart from the skin texture on them carefully using that tool to kind of blend it in with the rest of the foot and the toes. I haven't done the claws yet. That'll probably be the last thing I do. I'll probably do them in something hard like uh, an epoxy, like money or something like that. they're coming to the end of this part now and you can see how I did the rest in part three and possibly part four and five and I'll see you then <laughs>